Hello and welcome back. Today I want to continue talking about the Amazon Fire Stick and the ways in which you can enjoy media on your NAS. Today we want to continue looking at the Synology NAS, that would be this one here, and we're going to be looking at the DS video application from Synology. We're not really going to call this a review, but I am going to go as far as to say, let, you know, kind of let you guys know whether this is worth your time, because there are multiple DLNA media apps available on Amazon Fire Stick. Some of them official, some of them not. We've already done the video on installing Kodi on your NAS, uh, on your Amazon Fire Stick, and Kodi, of course, will let you enjoy the multimedia um, files that you have via DLNA on all the NAS, be it your Synology, your QNAP, or your WD. There's also other applications such as VLC, which is, although it's okay, has a terrible user interface. Um, and then of course you've got Plex, the big guns, but that uses quite a lot of system resources and more, as well as applications such as UPnP, which is an incredibly simplistic application, but you know, it does the job, although it is a paid for app, which brings us back to Synology's own app. They're one of the few, and I would go as far as to say only NAS brands out there that has an app available on Fire Stick, on, on Alexa, and more. But today I just want to focus on DS Video and tell you some of the highlights and the lowlights of it. So you can decide whether if you're going to buy a NAS to enjoy multimedia on your Fire Stick over DLNA, whether you're going to go for a Synology because you've seen that this app's available. So without further ado, let's go straight into the app. Now, first things first, I will highlight one of my niggling problems with this app and a number of Synology applications. It's a tiny, tiny detail, but given the ethos of Synology's company, this always disappoints me, namely one of scanning the local area network. Now, I'd, I'd, I'd accept a company like QNAP asking me to manually key in my IP address or maybe my Quick Connect if it's uh, internet only access, but for Synology, a brand that champions itself on being fantastically user friendly, it always surprises me when some of their apps don't just search the local area network. They ask you to manually enter the IP. And again, this isn't difficult. This is, like I say, a tiny, tiny gripe. But given Synology are really pushing this, we are a NAS brand, you know, for people with almost no technical knowledge trying to keep it as user friendly as possible, it surprises me that the option to just scan the local area network isn't available straight off the bat. Now, that's the IP this NAS is on. For those that have caught my other videos, you probably know exactly what the username and password is. But in case you don't, you can always look on the screen while I'm doing it for all the good it will do you. And we'll log into our Synology device over the local area network. Um, sorry about any noise in the background during the course of this video. We are having refurbishments at the moment and it is definitely playing its part on sound quality. So here we are, we've made our way into the Synology NAS and we're still utilizing all of those media files that we set up for our earlier video regarding Plex, DLNA and all of those tests that we did previously. Adding media libraries to Video Station is very straightforward indeed. You go into Video Station via your web browser and then from there you can create brand new folders if you so choose, such as what another one for movies. And from here you can then add the name of it, so let's call it film. And then from there you can then add this new directory and from there add a brand new directory that you want to look for on your NAS. It really is that straightforward. So. If what you would have needed to do in advance, another feature that they don't really go at length to explain on the app, although again, I'd already done it in advance, is that you have to make sure you've got Video Station installed on your Synology NAS and that you've set up all the directories because this app works in conjunction with the um, video app on the Synology NAS. You can't just expect all of these files and folders to be in the right directories and picked up by this application. You have to make sure you take care of everything on the other side on your Synology NAS. So if you're not aware of that, chances are you go straight into this app once again with your completely open mind, taking whatever's in front of you attitude towards Synology NAS and then hit a slight stumbling block. So it's little things like that. But if you get over these little shortcomings or you have even the most rudimentary knowledge of um, network uh, devices or you've owned a NAS for more than a month or so, then chances are most of this will be innate. So for example, over time, the NAS will rip um, thumbnails, metadata and more, much like Plex, and put it on here. That's something to do with the mobile app, not here on the destination device. 
But if we click a movie here, this is train spotting, we can see that at the moment it hasn't ripped all that information in the way that Plex has, because these files have only been on here for a few hours. But if we want, we can watch a movie here. And remember, this is a file that's on the Synology NAS right now. For the keen observer, you may notice the Synology LED lights will flash a little bit. And again, because it's over DLNA, we should be able to fast forward quite easily on the movie train spotting. Again, don't worry too much about the volume. I've kept it low for the sake of this video. Now, it is worth mentioning, if we pause that video, that you've got all the usual options with regards to subtitles. You can download them separately if you add one of the many uh, supported download sites or get them in advance. There's lots of options there with regards to the user interface and, of course, those uh, subtitle options. And again, you can fast forward, rewind, and it will be a hell of a lot more responsive than third party or online uh, media streaming sources. So if you do have a huge collection of media, then it's definitely worth um, utilizing an app like this with your Synology NAS. But that brings me back to an earlier point, which is how does this compare with other streaming devices over DLNA? Because if we go back, we've got another option there for TV shows. And again, we've got most of those shows that I added before, mostly British, you probably noticed, quite ridiculous. But if we go into something like Mr. Bean, it still hasn't ripped all the metadata in the way that I would have hoped. Now, Plex ripped all that metadata very, very easily. Now, I've made my way over to the um, details on the Synology Video Station app, and that has got those options, but it's just not, hasn't quite ripped that information in the background as quick as I would have liked. There's no denying it. This is an, a very, very impressive application. Moreover, it is one of the only NAS branded apps on Fire Stick. I just wish there was a little bit more going on with it and that it could compete with the likes of Plex. Because if you go into Plex and we compare Plex with this, Plex's user interface is a much, much different story. Now at the moment, this Fire Stick isn't paired with this NAS. So right now we've got all manner of things here. We've got some Christmas TV here. Look at Click and Collect, that's a TV show watched over Christmas. And this manages to rip information from something that I recorded on a Virgin box and then add it to my private collection. This has got all of that information. And it just, it feels more responsive than the Synology app. Now that's not me knocking this Synology app. I think it's very impressive indeed. But there's still no denying that maybe there's a little bit more going forward for you to choose the DS Video app compared with Plex. Now, while we're here, we will try out one more Synology application, of course, and that is going to be DS Photo. Now, DS Photo, much like the Synology application, um, will browse those folders that you use on the Photo Station application on your NAS. And again, we've been met with the login information of that Synology NAS. We've got to go back in and enter that information with regards to the IP. And again, it's little things like that. I know you only have to do it the first time, probably, but I'm surprised there isn't the ability to scan your local area network and find out this information uh, remotely. Hopefully I'll skip forward for this bit for you because it must be super boring to watch. And now we're logging into our Synology NAS using the Photo Station or DS Photo app for Fire Stick. So I've only got uh, three albums installed on this NAS that we were using for the other videos with some ones that I've got for work there. We've got Hanover when I was at CBIT. And again, we can browse those folders and files very, very easily indeed. We've got lots of examples of Synology NAS, in fact, as well as some of those NASs that we saw, such as the DS619 Slim, and of course, other units as well. These are the B-cut ones, and of course, that is IO safe with their fireproof NAS. It's very easy to navigate, and it even plays the videos as well, though I think there is difficulty playing them on this case. Again, browsing is very, very straightforward, and if you've created playlists already, then you're able to access those playlists very easily indeed. And again, you know, the user interface is nice and straightforward and quite easy. If you go into the settings menus, they're quite basic. I'm not going to say they're, you know, earth shatteringly good, but I will say as a simple form of accessing your photos on your Fire Stick, this is definitely better than nothing and definitely better than anything else any other NAS, NAS brands putting out there. So we will be doing a complete look at all the DLNA media apps for Fire Stick, so do stay tuned. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to support this channel. I don't have Patreon or anything like that. So this channel is supported by you guys liking and subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.